place to be is living free, living free in Tennessee. Silent night, holy night. Merry Christmas, Merry Tim. Merry Christmas. <laughs> I, you know, let's just get the elephant out of the room. <laughs> Why are you wearing a Christmas shirt? I just it's left. Christmas in September. For those who don't know, I'm on a 36-day road trip. I just left Prepper Camp. I have shirts that I love to wear when I drive. For some reason, they're comfortable and they put me in the festive mood. And I discovered this morning that both my hotel did not have laundry service and I had one clean sock left. So if anybody would like to know why I'm wearing Christmas, here we are. Don't worry. He doesn't smell bad. So we will make it through the podcast today. I told you guys we might go early because right after I sent out the weekly mail today and the topic for today is building community and everything else, because we're just going to talk about what it takes to build community Toolman Tim texts me and says, hey, I'm in Cookville, Tennessee. Can I stop by? Now, you guys know I have boundaries and all those things. And I'm like, I really could use an hour or two with a friend just talking with a friend. Because it's been a little weird around here for the last four or five weeks. And I was like, I want to see Tim. And I'm talking about community. So I'll see. Does Tim want to come on the live stream with me at the Living Free in Tennessee channel and then when i was setting up the stream i'm like wait a minute i can stream the tim's channel too so now we're streaming on my channel and tim's channel so if you're on my channel go find is it toolman tim or the workshop toolman Toolman tim will get you there on youtube and give him a subscribe and if you're on toolman tim's channel give me a subscribe i'm living free in tennessee or at lftn because living free in tennessee is too long to type out and nobody knows really how to spell tennessee unless they live in tennessee right I own land here and I still misspell it. You still, no, it's it's lots of N's and E's. That's that's all that's going on. So before we we hop in today, I want to just talk about our featured event of today's show. Toolman Tim is going to be speaking at it October 14th and 15th, the Self-Reliance Festival in Camden, Tennessee. It's going to be the best one we've ever done. And I'm super excited about it. I'm always excited about it because I coordinate the event. (laughs) But as, as the piece come in and and stack up closer and closer and closer i get more and more excited and people keep like popping up last minute saying they're gonna come and we've got like the schedule of the speakers out and all of that that's all over at selfrelianceFestival.com. you don't want to miss this like where else can you go see joel salatin jack spiracle two man tim nicole sauce john willis for 95 bucks including your tent camping for two days and we stay on site and talk to people. And all kinds of, uh, it's incredible. I it, I just came from an event of almost 2,000 people, and I absolutely love it. But if anybody asks me what my highlight of the year is, it's 100% seeing my tribe at Self-Reliance Festival. And that's no slam on any other incredible events I go to, but that is the highlight <laughs> that I get excited to see. It's like, it's like Christmas, folks. <laughs> yeah, so Joel Salatin emailed me at the end of last week. And he's like, hey, Nicole, here's my flight information, blah, blah, blah. How's it going? And I did not answer him for three days. <laughs> and, you know, mind you, this is a speaker. I'm supposed to say, great, I'll take the flight information. I'll put it in the little confirmation letter, send him a quick email, say this is when you're speaking. Like all of those are going out right now. I was buried in details of the event. Mm-hmm. And finally, Sunday, I sent him an email. I said, I just wanted, you know, I got your email. Thank you for that. Like I have hit that point of event coordination where it's all the details. And then on the other side of that, which is about Tuesday of next week, I'll be through all of the audit to make sure we've taken care of everything and ordered all the printing and all of that stuff. I'll send you a summary of this one page. And then I get, I just can't wait to see you when I'm at the point where I'm not detailing and I get to enjoy the event. And he's like, no problem, Nicole, just deal with your details. I don't even need that summary till like a couple of days before I leave. So nice. I was like, good, because we're like right at that point where it's all the details. And then and then it's the fun part for me. Like the details are honestly not the fun part for me, but but I do them because I love you guys. So those tickets are at selfreliancefestival.com. The other sponsor of today's show, I actually chose to highlight mm. Strong Roots Resources, Carrie Brown. You know who that is, right? Good friend of mine too. Great friend. And I, I'm highlighting him because I was speaking at an event yesterday in Spencer, Tennessee, and somebody came up to me and talked about their homestead that they're building. And they were like this and that and the other thing. And there's, they've got a lot going on. And I said, you know, 
I think you should reach out to a consultant <laughs> who, who checks things out from a permaculture standpoint. And Star Wars Resources is one of the people who does that in our network. Like, check him out. See what his pricing's like. He specializes in sort of the smaller size homestead like you're talking about. And this is somebody who listens to my podcast. Oh, yeah. And the person asks me, who? <laughs> like, I've been highlighting Strong Roots Resources for like, you know, whatever. So I thought I'll say strongrootsresources.com verbally so that this person who now knows who they are, because I know you know who you are, <laughs> can uh, hook up with Carrie Brown. And if you are... If you have a piece of property, he'll do that. He'll also geolocate your wild edible plants, which is cool. He's doing the wild edible walks that we're doing at the Self-Reliance Festival. Next up, we have Agorist Tax Advice. Have you have you talked to him yet, Tim? Yes. I mean, not from Tax Advice, but I've interviewed well, him Why not? Show. Oh, wait, you don't live in the U.S. <laughs> yeah, you know how it is. <laughs> they, they already steal enough, enough of my hard-earned tax dollars. Yeah, you know. So Matthew Sersley of Agorist Tax Advice does focus on the federal side of tax code, but he can talk to you about how your finances work, audit what you're doing, give you options for how to structure your business, how to track your tax write-offs so that you optimize every tax write-off you can, you understand risks associated with it. Check him out, agoristaxadvice.com forward slash LFTN if you want to schedule your free consultation because he doesn't want to work with people he doesn't think he can help. So he'll talk to you first. So cool. Yeah. Belinda says he did geolocate our wild edibles, found stuff we didn't know we had. Um, those of you in the live stream, do me a favor. I have gone an hour early, which means people who had this on their schedule didn't know. Yep. Ping that out on socials. And if you could put the first couple words in all caps, I'll know I'm supposed to look at it because there are two of us behind this camera today. We're very, we're very cozy right now. <laughs> <laughs> Back here, my mouse is like usually my mouse is over here my mouse is like kind of up over here i Things, just throw it at you yeah i mean it's gonna be i'm not gonna be typing typing back at you while we record <laughs> today our live stream schedule is today this one tomorrow at 12 30 we have combat art training on with john willis oh for the tuesday live at 12 30 Wednesday, I am going to record the Monday episode, normal segments, and mm -hmm. I'm going to talk about how to prioritize your life or what you're going to do when you're just inundated with details, because literally that's what I'm doing right now. I thought I'd share what I'm doing strategically <laughs> to not lose my mind completely, completely. completely. It's kind of half lost right now, but completely. And then Thursday, we have at 7 p.m. a self-reliance festival live stream where I'm just talking. I'm just going to be there if anybody else wants to hop on they can and i'll send an email about that to like speakers and vendors and stuff and we're just going to talk about all this the cool stuff we have queued up answer any questions folks have about self-reliance festival 7 p.m central and then of course friday at 10 30 i have homestead happenings so that's all our announcement yes oh, andrew is awesome i've taken many classes with him he's doing a class monday and tuesday after the self-reliance festival on the special operations equipment compound and um He's selling tickets through his website directly, but I threw it up on the tickets page of SRF and it takes you to his website just in case you want to go grab tickets for that too. It's going to be a homestead, some sort of a homestead training for, I'm trying to, I might've met him. Um, I have to, I forget the title of it right now. I'm having That's a brain fog, but, but it's going to be really cool. Um, it's homestead defense is what he's doing. And I believe they're doing some field work out on the SOE compound as well as, as, classroom time as part of that so patrolling class yep cool. it's going to be awesome so that's that's also at selfrelianceFestival.com. just click on tickets look at the workshops that are all around srf and you'll find all sorts of stuff yeah patrolling on the homes that i knew what it was but i was just having that moment because i'm really thinking about what we get to talk about next oh, that's okay so i'm going to start before i say the question everybody asks which is how do you build community tim oh, yeah how is building community similar to building a content creation business or a handyman business that's what i want to know that's really good i would say they're they're both they kind of go hand in hand so <laughs> you can't it's pr okay you could build a content creation conglomerate yeah. without a community but you are going to need economies of scale at that point yep you're going to need millions of people who just randomly come across you you're going to be it'll be like that one-off thing you know where you've invented a product that everybody needs but they only ever have to buy it once so you never have a returning customer so when you build community and this is not there's no negative down to this but when i started with content creation mm -hmm. i talked about all the cool workshop people who weren't even there yet 
I, you know, I, what, however you want to look at that, I, I discussed it. And so when you have a community and part of being a community is giving more than you take, or at least making sure it's even. And I always have tried to make sure that I give as much as I take or I, no, I, I think I hope to try to make sure I give more than I take, to be honest, but you really need both. And again, so let's take it back to the handyman business, which I don't know if I told you this, I just sold. So I split my business that I built August 31st, the handyman business that I built for seven years. I sold it for um, a not insignificant sum of money, Yay! which was awesome. But community, okay, look at my handyman business. If I was just getting one-off customers, my town of 1,500 would have been exhausted almost within a year or two. But when you make relationships with people, you offer value. They pay you value back in exchange, and you do what you say you will do. All of a sudden, you have more than just community. You have a wonderful lady named Kathy, whom whenever I go into the plumbing store, says, hey, Tim, how are you doing? Asks about the kids. I tell her I'm taking a trip to go speak. She's like, good for you. That's the type of thing you end up with. But if you ever want to do anything in your life, anything of any import at all, you need to have community around you because you can't lone wolf it forever. You can try for a bit when you're 20 years old and uh, once you hit 40, <laughs> heaven help you. <laughs> heaven help you. I was really struck yesterday because uh, a, a whole group of six different groups, the people who sort of started the groups, we they called us the leaders, but I don't see myself as the leader of my group. Sure. The group leads itself. Uh, got together and said, how can we help each other? Like, what can we do to cross pollinate? And we had all these discussions and it was sort of geographically locked. So it was, it was Tennessee related, but the way I see all of these groups that are popping up all over the country and all over the world is we are not geographically located. We are united by a commitment to being good people, sure. to helping other people and ourselves build a life that is more resilient, that is more sustainable, and that is successful, whatever that looks like for the person. And that's how I can resonate with a lady who runs three agencies mm. in DC center, like centric areas and lives in a condo in New York, Sue. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. As well as, you know, somebody who's just starting their homestead for the first time and not quite sure what to do next. It's because it's none of my business what how Sue builds her life. Right. I'm just happy she's building the life she loves and she's doing, you know, she's having a great time of it. What I care about is that she is free to do that. You connect on the important things, the things that matter. Yeah. And all the rest doesn't matter at all. Likewise, every business I've started that has actually been successful had that element of the people we serve connect on that level rather than a specific demographic. Absolutely. And, or a specific, I mean, when I worked in libertarian policy, it was a specific <laughs> political sure. thing, but you know what I mean? It's, it's just, it's interesting to me. And the actions you take in your business are very, to, to make it successful are very similar that you do to build a community that's successful. Absolutely. And yet, like right now, people are screaming like, how do I find community? How do I build community? You hear that all the time. And there's nothing wrong with that. If you're the person asking that question right now, I'm glad you're asking it because you're ready to start doing it. Yes. So I just came back from a, speaking of community, yeah. I've actually been, I'm a, again. That's on, all he's doing right Yeah, now. it's community building, baby. <laughs> <laughs> it's really, you could call it five events. If you include the work day on our Tennessee property, five events. So I just came from prepper camp. Yeah. I did 13 interviews, um, 10 of mine and three with other creators while I was there to, to, in, to meet people. And this all started a year ago at prepper camp, at least the interviews in person. I met a dude named Brad five times August, uh, the, the musician he did. And you may not know him, but you'll probably remember his work. I've met him. Have you met and him? And I would love for him to play at SRF at some point. I'm I bet you we can make it and happen. And I kind of meant to talk to him about it. Sure. That. Maybe for the, yeah. yeah. So he has been Anyway, I, we got to see him live. He performed at Prepper Camp, and he came over and introduced his family to me because we got to know each other. I interviewed him last year, and so we interviewed again, and he has been – so he his passion was freedom. Again, it's in different forms, but for him it was anti-mandate, right? That was his deal. He has been over the entire world in the last 12 months, and he wanted to let people know. He's like, sometimes you feel like you're alone, and I've been to – 
believe it was Australia, Germany, England, all across North America. And he found like-minded folk everywhere he went. No matter how hard you think you don't know anybody exists around you, you will find them. That And that's the thing. As I was in front of this room of people yesterday, mm. and they have found each other already. So that's <laughs> a good start. Some of them were at that meeting for the first time ever. Ooh. How'd that go? Some of them lived relatively close to each other and didn't know each other. Sure. And then met each other. And the reason that happened is they did the most important thing, I think, to being successful in business <laughs> or community. They got out and they got started and they went outside of their comfort zone. Hmm. And it's that comfort zone that's really hard. You know, we were talking about like, I'm, I'm going to be vulnerable here. You go right and you ahead. can admit if you are also vulnerable. On my way to this meeting, yeah. I had anxiety, Nicole, in the car with me. Going, me man, I got to go be around people. And I'm an introvert and blah, blah, blah. And I'm the speaker, man. Like, I, I can't know. not I show Nicole. up. And I'm like, gosh, I'd really rather stay home and take a bath and read a book. <laughs> and I'm like, what is wrong with you, Nicole? And the minute I get there, I'm happy. I'm in, I'm like having a great time. I love it. And, and like doubting Nicole in the car all yes. the way there is like, uh, John Wills would call that your bitch voice, right? I'm sure. You're whining yeah, I've heard it bit. like yep. your whiny little bitch. I was like, what, where did she come from? But it keeps it like learning that when that, when those doubts come in mm -hmm. to put them aside, go out of my comfort zone and just do what I'm going to do. That's when the success comes. And that's when I build real, like I met four or five people and had really good conversations last night that I'm hoping to see again. And I reconnected with some people <laughs> I've recently met and it just really solidified some relationships that I hadn't solidified yet. Cause we're mostly text-based. That seems to be a theme about getting out of your comfort zone because I got so many stories I could tell, but I'm going to tell you the one that we just talked about yeah. a few minutes ago. Yeah. I'm heading down and there's a friend in this chat right now who will know who you are. And I'm really proud of you for always stepping outside your comfort zone. I'm not saying who that was. I'm just no saying, idea who it is. No idea at all. But it happened to me again. I am, again, I'll say this. I am on a, the longest road trip of my entire life to go to five different community meeting events, spending a not insignificant amount of money out of my own pocket. I'm a half hour away from the culmination of a 37 hour drive to go to a 2000 people event. And little Mr. Tim, the old, you know, remember um, Bugs Bunny, the, the little angel and yeah, the, the, devil? Angel, the devil. Yeah, the yeah. devil's like, hey, you don't need to go there. You know, not that I didn't need to go there, but this is going to be stressful. It's a lot of work. You, you got to talk to people. You got to be on for the next. And if you can hear my voice, I was on for the last three days. But you know what? Right around that time, Nicole sends me a message. She's like, hey, did you drive by my house? <laughs> and I'm like, I, I didn't. She goes, good, because if you had, if I was going to kick your butt. I'm like, <laughs> she said, make sure you see me on the way back. And that was cool. And I pulled over to record an episode because I needed a breather. I needed. I knew I was going to the event. I pull over, I record a 15 minute episode while I'm recording. Joel Riles sends me a text. Hey man, when you get in here, I can't wait to see you. That's all I needed, you know, but did I go? Yep. Did I have the time of my life? Absolutely. Am I glad I went? Yep. Will I go again? Absolutely. <laughs> and you know what? <laughs> the bitch voice, I'll talk to him again next year. <laughs> but I just friggin' ignore it. Yeah, right. So yeah. that, and that's, I hope, I want people to know that like it, on the road is lonely. It's weird. Like I love it, but it it is. You do these things, even though you know they're not going to be great. It's not going to be sunshine and roses for thirty six days. But the highs are way better than the lows, and it's awesome, you know. And that's why we reach out and do this stuff because, yeah, you get that little mental kick at first. You're like, oh, I don't want to do it, and then you make the communities, and that's the difference. That's that's the difference between somebody who stays home as an individual, never has that outreach or the person that jumps out of their comfort zone and find something way better and maybe even way different than they thought they were going to find. That's the other thing is people look at different places to go from the outside and they're like, I don't want to be around a bunch of paranoid preppers or I don't want to be enough around a bunch of flaming hippie liberals or, <laughs> I, you know, whatever. And then you go. And I went to an event where I thought I was going to run into some serious hippie vibe. Like, and I'm, I'm, I'm a hippie, basically. Sure, yeah. I grew up in Oregon with Birkenstock. I am like literally wearing Birkenstocks right now. I'm a Birkenstock wearing hippie from Oregon. So I love hippies. 
but there's a an element of hippie culture that is not my scene and it has a lot to do with like the drug aspect sure. and, and like that just not my scene I think you should be able to do anything you want to do from a freedom standpoint, but not my scene. And I thought I was going to run into this at this event because I, I was like, mm, I sense drugs and blah, blah, blah. That's not what was there. Not at all. Not at all. Quite the opposite. A bunch of really cool people who are hippies like I'm a hippie. More like a, a, a get shit done hippie who doesn't do drugs. And... Um, that was well. I guess I do coffee, so that's a drug, right? Oh, yeah. I I like my bourbon, but I um, like caffeine in general. Yeah, caffeine's it's not pretty good. good. You, but yeah. Um, and but it's uh, and chocolate. Mm. Mm. Just full disclosure. <laughs> it's okay. I promise. But had I had I just said, okay, my initial assessment of this is that, and not given it an actual try, I wouldn't have met an entire rolodex of people who i love now and and that's where when i was at so i was at that meeting yesterday and there were some people in the group who are more on the um differently they're well they're fear <laughs> they're still like a lot of people come to self-reliance and prepping and mm -hmm. survivalism and homesteading from a point of fear first because they wake up one day and they realize the food system's a hoax hmm. the medical system's a hoax Politically, I have no power to change anything. Oh, no. What do I do? Mm -hmm. And then they freak out and they find even more conspiracies going on. And I'm not I'm not discounting any conspiracy, nor am I confirming any conspiracy. I'm just saying you can go off the deep end and you can go down a pretty bad rabbit trail. Right. Uh, Aaron says it doesn't make it easier knowing everyone feels. Yeah. But it also makes it, but it also does make it easier. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yes. It's funny how that works. Yeah, it's true. It's still, you still have You're that still voice. You still got it. that voice yep. every time. Um, but I was like, if, if you would not go to the group because you woke up and they seem like way more down the conspiratorial trail right. than you were, then you wouldn't discover that maybe they aren't. Right. Or maybe they're right about something. But like, you know, or, you or learn it, things. Maybe it doesn't matter. Or the, maybe the it doesn't matter. Right. Yeah. I got another one for you. This was a good okay. one. So a couple, three years ago, I don't know when it was, but this was just as the workshop was starting to grow, I get it. I don't even know where I get the message. Facebook somewhere. So this dude who lived four or five hours away from me in Alberta, this would have been, I think maybe just the second real connection I made in my, so you got to know Canada. It's a long ways apart, blah, blah. Anyway, this dude's like, hey, my name's Chris, Chris Dixon. He said, my wife and I have to deliver a vehicle up to you. He goes, I know you don't know me at all. But would you like to get together for coffee? So my serial killer radar went up for a minute. You know, I was like, oh boy. And then I realized, I said to Becky, I said, I have to take a chance. I do. I, I said, because if I don't ever do it, we're never going to make real in-world connections. And so I did. And instead of going for coffee, we had coffee out in my workshop, which the heater wasn't really working and it was very cold. We sat out there for, I don't know, he could tell you, two and a half hours. His poor yeah. wife froze to death. That was kind of where I was like, you know what? I'm cool in the workshop. Let's hang out there just to get to know. I mean, we're best friends now. Yeah, we talk Chris all the Dixon time. Chris Dixon and his wife are, are good oh, people. Oh, incredible. Yeah. So yeah. We, we, you know, whenever I go down to my mailbox in Montana, almost always I try to look him up. We All that. It's just, oh, I love it. And it never would have happened if I'd have listened to that little, quick little anxiety, social anxiety of, nah, you don't need to let somebody Serial invade your space. Alert. Yeah. So, I mean, not saying don't pay attention to it ever, but, yeah. but you do, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's more often wrong than right. Let's put it that way. Right. Well, so then the other part of that is the concept of like-minded. How important is it that people in your community be like-minded and what does that mean? Okay, this is a lesson I learned from Nicole many years ago, guys. And it took a long time for me to learn. And it may have something to do with coming out of a conservative Christian background because it was the almost like you had to agree on all the things. And I don't know when it was, I finally heard it from you, but it was, you only need to agree on the things that matter. And that's where communities built. And the rest of it doesn't matter because I have to continuously tell myself, I bet you, <laughs> I bet you there's a lot of things that people think that Tim is out to lunch on that. 
And if they if they judged me based on the fact that I have eight Chihuahua dogs at home, <laughs> eight? It, eight, we have wow. eight of them. Yeah. So, and I'm sure that makes me a weirdo with some people, right? I get it. But if they judge me on that, okay. You know, if, if I judged somebody based on the fact that they're passionate about astral projection. Now, if that's all they're passionate about, we're probably not going to hang out for very long because we differ in that area. But if we agree on the don't steal my stuff and don't hurt me, and give as much as you take i can work with the rest now but it took me a long and it was you 100 percent. i you i don't remember which podcast it was but one of them and it just stuck with me and it's gotten better it's not completely gone but agree on the important things well and one of the things we discussed last night with the group because when i give a presentation at a group meeting like that guys uh different than if i'm doing like a keynote thing where i have a pretty sussed out outline mm -hmm. A lot of my presentation is based on the body language of the people in the room. Like I have some key points I'm hitting and it became clear to me that we should talk about freedom and what is and is not your business. Because the hardest part about freedom is knowing what is none of your business. Because we want to get like when we see somebody making a bad choice, right? We want to tell them not to do that. We want to make them not do that. And we cannot make somebody not do something like that. A bad choice is your free choice to choose. Right. And when you are finally able, and there are topics where you're like, man, that's just really, really harmful. I, I don't know if I can, like the most I can do is decide I can't associate with somebody who does that to themselves all the time because it hurts me too much. And so I need to put a boundary there. Yes. Right. That's all I can do if it's not stealing my stuff and not hurting me. And when you have clarity on that, you also have clarity on what we mean by like-minded. So mm -hmm. I literally care not who you voted for, even if it's Joe Biden in the last election. Really? I didn't vote for either. I'm sure you didn't, <laughs> but I don't care. And I might think that that's silly, but I don't care because that's not that's not the core value. Now, there are core values that could lead to a vote like that. That would mean we weren't aligned around freedom. Right. But just because somebody took one action one way does not mean I, I voted for Bernie Sanders in a primary election once against Hillary Clinton. And my reasoning was that I thought Hillary Clinton was more terrifying than Bernie Sanders. Bernie Sanders getting elected? I didn't think he was going to get anything done on his socialist agenda. So I was like, that's, you know. I voted for the Green Party. So I went out. I was like, I just voted for a socialist. That was the last time I voted, by the way. There you go. Yeah. But it was it was just, I thought maybe my vote will make a difference in a small county. Hmm. And it made zero impact at all. Like 15 other people in my whole county voted for him. So, you know, so whatever. I'm just saying there are reasons and why people do things that you may still be aligned about them. And if all you do is hyper-focus on that one thing, you're, you're doing yourself a disservice. I've been listening to old Art Bell episodes when I drive, especially at night. I love them. And do you ever listen to Art Bell back in the day? No, coast to coast. He had the, was, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. But he also did news episodes and I have a point here. I promise. <laughs> so you're talking about how, you know, we focus on these things like, uh, you know, Trump bad, whatever. I don't care. You just pick your, that's a hot topic issue right now, right? Yeah. People, this was a 97 ish uh, episode. So 26 years ago, people were calling in, losing their collective minds over something Ralph Nader did. Does anybody know what it was? I don't even remember. And I listened to it last night. I don't know. It was 1997. Who knows? What did it, you know, it didn't affect the temperature of the water in their pool. And if that's the type of thing that you're excommunicating somebody over and not digging deeper and thinking, huh, I wonder if we could work together. How much is it really going to matter in six months or a year, right? I, a lot of the stuff that we all got really bent out of shape out of over, over the last three years, here we are. You know, the things that people thought were really, really important. You might, Yeah, so <laughs> Backwood still likes me and I'm Canadian. But yeah, so, so a, a lot of it just doesn't matter. This is about Hillary. She oh, might she be the most terrifying person <laughs> alive. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Absolutely. And yeah, I like that. Grumpy Acres. Yeah, read what Grumpy okay. says. When you are a true community, you can set boundaries and tell the other person why those boundaries are there. Keeping each other accountable is how you become a core in, become a core inside the community. 
And I'm going to be, again, 100% transparent. When I first came to the community, I was not used to that sort of openness. And it felt abrasive and uncomfortable. Because I grew up in a family, a household, who would just let things fester and disappear. And when I first, even when I first met Eve a year and a half ago, it took me a few minutes. And we talked how many times for so long, right? And now I use that in my life and I embrace it. And once in a blue moon, I'm like, did she mean, oh no, no, that that's what real friends say to each other. I guess it took me to be 39, 40 to find it. But, you know, uh, and I mean, I shouldn't say that because I found it in my wife, Becky, but together we had been so used to letting so much slide with everybody else that when we finally found our community, we were like, wow. But it, it rubbed you the wrong way for a minute because, it, well, growth is always uncomfortable, right? And so when you're rubbing up against each other and learning, yeah, it's going to be weird, especially if you're not used to it. But then when you realize that's how real stuff happens, yeah, it's pretty cool. My closest friends tell me some pretty terrible things. I bet. And I had one come up to me uh, maybe a, four weeks ago and say, looking from the outside, if I was doing what you're doing, this is what I do. And I'm not seeing any of that from you at all, Nicole. Do you really want to be doing that thing? Okay. Just looking from the outside, just an observation. No offense, me, it meant blah, 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 blah. Like, you do know you're talking to Nicole Sauce. Like, you don't have to tell me all the disclaimers about how you're not trying to tick me off right now. Because when somebody who really knows me says something critical, I'm going to look, I'm going to take it serious. So I'm going to look at it. If, if you are listening to my podcast, I've never met you. I don't know who you mm. are. I've never seen you interact on my, on my comments and you say something critical. Bye -bye. I mean, I might consider it, but a lot of times it's like, whatever, you know, that's your, that's your thing. Yeah. I don't actually know who you are. And, and that's why I always come back around to community. So success in business is, you know, people well enough that they are willing to tell you when your coffee roasts don't taste right. Yes. I have two, yes. I have two customers who were like, this just does not taste the same. And they told me that a month ago. And then two weeks ago, they were like, Hey, we need more coffee. And I had sort of figured out why I thought their coffee didn't taste the same. And I had roasted another one and then they were reordering. And I said, my roaster's broken, so it will be a week because I'm waiting for a part. And they said, well, you know, since your roaster's broken, I did, we did want to say, like, even that roast didn't taste the same. Okay. And it tasted over roasted because I was like, oh, maybe it's not going, you know, dark enough. But <sighs> the problem was probably my elements. I had an element out and it was raising the temperature slower. And I don't know how long that was going on. I just, I do remember all of a sudden it seemed like roasts were taking a really long time and I didn't know why. And I already had elements on order to just replace them all because you just mm -hmm. do that on a schedule. And I said, well, I really appreciate you bringing that up to me because I need to hear that because for every one customer who's willing to do that for me, there were probably 10 customers who were like, this just doesn't taste the same. I don't know why. Oh, well, whatever, yeah. you know, and they either went away or they just were like, well, it's still good enough. Well, I don't want to be good enough, right? So uh, I think that level of trust is really helpful. And, and when they told me that, I said, I just want to be really clear. When I said it might be the roast level, it was because I changed my roast level definitions after you first started ordering coffee for me. So I thought it was because you wanted it darker. But now I'm seeing that like, I'm just going to do the two roasts I do and send you both so you can decide which one. And, and they did. Mm -hmm. And I was like, does that taste better? And they were like, yes. So how cool is that? That though? is. Yeah. Because there's no resentment sitting there and festering and that again, like I said, I know I go back to, and I guess part of it is just where, you know, kind of where I came from, but when it comes down to it, that is a real community and real community is rough and tumble and, you know, hard around the edges sometimes, but that's the real, that's where you get it. And yeah. I think the biggest thing that people have trouble with me about, and you kind of brought it up that I rubbed you the wrong way. Sure. Is if you ask me a question in email, I will answer it mm -hmm. when I answer it. And I will not say, hi, how are you? Right. I will not say, 
Yep. Anything gentle, if, if the question is a yes or no question, you might actually just get a yes, all lowercase with no period for me. And then people think I'm mad. I'll send you long texts. I'll be like a paragraph because that's why I talk while I'm talking. And I'll be like, you don't need to respond to this. Yeah. And then she doesn't. Sometimes she'll get a thumbs up. Sometimes I won't. But I knew I was like, I just need you to read that. That's yeah. all. That's all yeah. it is, you know? <laughs> yeah. That's but, funny. but I, you know, I do. I, I think I need to talk about that more on my podcast because mm -hmm. probably some people get emails from me and I give them a one sentence in, uh, answer or I don't answer them at all. And I'm like, Johnny, meet Fred. Yes. <laughs> and I'm sending it to the person they want to talk to. And my my goal for that is to answer as many emails as I can. And I can't answer all the emails I get. Sure. And so then when I do answer them, I answer them tersely. Mm -hmm. And I it's literally just answering your question. If you ever think I'm mad and don't know if I'm mad, I am not mad. That's good. I thought you were going to say ask me, but then I was like, no, I don't. Yeah. If if I'm mad, you're bloody well going to know it. Like, I, I I blew my voice out Saturday morning. It's not my proudest moment. It happens. I was in bed. I was like, I'm so tired. And I had gone swimming laps on Friday, which you know that whole story. And it felt, I was like. It's Saturday. I can stay in bed an extra half hour today. This is great. And I hear thunk. Oh. And the cat had gotten on my counter, which has all my tax paperwork spread out on it right now, taken the vase that I have holding basil up and thunked it over and gotten water all over my... And I knew exactly what it was when I heard it. And I am up yelling no as loud as I can as I walk across my house. I was so mad. And I lost my voice for the rest of the day Aww. after that. Cat knew I was mad. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Fair enough. Okay, we got a question here. How do you overcome feeling like you have nothing to offer a community? That's a great question. It's tough because, okay, this is what I'm going to tell you, Greenberry Grove. It's not true. But just because it's not true doesn't mean you don't feel that way. So the first thing I need you to know is that you have something you can offer a community. Maybe what might help is anyone else. And it does not necessarily have to be someone that lives near you, but someone who knows you. Ask them to give you a list of the things, your positive attributes or your whatever it is. You don't need to be, you know, a SWAT team leader or somebody who knows how to set up, you know, listening and observation posts to be a thriving, integral part of a community. You can be a connector. You can be the type of person who says, hey, Nicole, I met somebody who's into tanning hides that would be a great episode or make a great interview for you. Connect, connect. That, I'm telling you, you could be a somebody who sources parts. Now, you might be a guy who works in parts right now, but guess what? Those skills are the same. And whatever you mean to a community, whatever your definition of what kind of community it is, there's going to be times that your community is going to need to get things. And whether that's finding the cheapest baseball uniforms for your local little league team or finding the best deal on a pallet of mountain house freeze-dried food that could be your skill there are 100 things and you just you probably don't see it because you're so close to yourself it's like when we're creating content it's like i really shouldn't do that again because i just did that a year ago you're like whoa 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 just because i'm so close with that doesn't mean yeah and that's the way you are with yourself so it might be somebody you know is going to be honest with you Look them up, ask them, say, hey, make me a list, my good and my bad qualities. You might not like it, but you'll find something in there that'll make you. Yeah, every time I do a cheese making webinar, mm -hmm. and I've done multiple cheese making webinars to just my network. Sure. People, people show. show up. <laughs> I know. Okay, I'm going to, you know what, again, I just did the exact same presentation at, at uh, Prepper Camp that I did last year, repairedness. I made a few changes, added some really cool stuff at the very end, but for the most part, it was about 45 minutes of the hour was exactly the same as last year. I asked, first off, and I was worried. I was like, oh, this is going to be bad. Well, I had three times the crowds this year that I had last year, which was cool. So I would ask every time, how many of you are new here? Almost everybody was new anyway. There was half a dozen people who came back from last year to hear the same thing. And two of them came two days in a row to hear it twice. So I'm telling you, we, we are our own worst critic. And it, it, whether you're a content creator looking to join community and entrepreneur, because you're the one closest to yourself. So try to get outside of yourself and ask somebody, hey, what, what are my attributes and what can I use? 
start with that. I think the other part of that in building community is when you like your role when you first come to a new community. Let's say I go to prepper camp next year. Sure. Totally new community for me. My role there is not to be anything to that community mm -hmm. specific. My role is to go there and get to know people and observe. And if somebody asks me for something, then do the thing if it's within my purview to do it. Yes. That's that role is then you don't come on too strong. Mm -hmm. Like I know all about ham radio. I will help you with ham radio, blah, 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 blah. There's like probably 57,000 ham radio guys at prepper camp sure. who are already kind of up in that role in the community, which means there may or may not be space for that. One of my, my pieces of expertise, which ham radio is not that thing, but I'm just <laughs> ham radio is on my mind right now. Cause I need to call Evan later. And I saw him yesterday. Yeah, I, I he I called him today. I I need to call him back. I have five things to talk to him about. I was like, you know, I could we could email back and forth 19 more times or we could have a five minute phone call and it'll be done. So much easier. So I'm going to I'm going to go Gen X on his butt and go. <laughs> He'll see it and be like, I don't know. No, 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 he's I know, like, I know. who's that 888 number? I'm like, no, it's not a sex call. It's actually my phone number. <laughs> no, I was never a sex call worker. It was just. Just that number. It's just that number that they gave me when I got my first cell phone. Ham radio. We have a thing in the community yeah. workshop when anybody says the word ham radio. Yeah. We have to drink bourbon. Okay. All I like that is water, but anyway. Yeah. Cheers. Yep. We'll have cheers. bourbon right go. after this. Um, but the the thing about that is if you don't know what you can bring to the community and you feel kind of intimidated or not very secure in that. Give it a little bit of time and it will come clear. I think about Toby from this discount by our bags. Like the whole reason his company exists is he was in a mutual assistance group. And there were guys who could start a fire with sticks and who could, you know, shoot really well in a defensive situation and blah, blah, blah. Like all of these skills that they had hunt deer, cut up deer. He's like, I got nothing. I, I have a desk job and no skills and I'm not in the best of shape right now and whatever. And then he realized what he did for a living was source product for Dollar General. So he knows how to find things in bulk for cheap mm. and can pass that on. And he looked at the world of food storage, which was a particular interest of his. Sure. And was like, you know, people do this wrong. They buy the biggest Mylar bag they find because it's cheap. They put it in a five gallon bucket. They pour stuff in that bag. And then when they open it, it's open. And you got to use a five gallon buckets worth of stuff. And you have two people living in your house and all you're eating for the next four months is mashed potatoes or whatever's <laughs> in that bucket. And so he came up with a list of resources on how to store food. He figured out how to connect people with cheaper Mylar bags because he buys them by the container full. I and already had the relationships with the manufacturers to make sure the quality was there. Mm. And that's why discount Mylar bag exists. It's funny that I mentioned sourcing products because we didn't talk about that. But literally, that's how his business, that was his yeah. thing for the community. Well, it was funny that you brought that up. Yeah. Because he just, you know, and, and he first for a long time, he just sat in this community going like, if anything really bad happens, I'm the one who dies because I got nothing to bring to the Aww. group. And it turned out he did. So there is something there you may not know. You know, that's funny you mentioned that because I I left. Okay, I, I we always talk about the things that are most fresh on mind, right? So again, I'm going to mention Prepper Camp because it was a big deal. I went last year and I left thinking, that was cool, but I'm not sure if I'm going to go back or not. Now, I left this year saying, I'm absolutely going back. And part of that was because last year was my first year and I was finding where I fit into the community or even if I did. And then I'm like, oh, yeah. So then I discovered interviews, in-person interviews are my niche at this thing. And I love it. And also promoting it. I... I you know, I like social and I like doing those quick little things that nobody else are doing. And I realized, huh, I kind of, you know, round peg and a round hole finally, as opposed to when you show up, you're just kind of floating around the edge of seeing, do I fit in? Am I, you know, because you, there's another thing because she, uh, I don't, can't remember who said it, but you might not have something to offer to a certain community or not in a bad way, or you might, it may be that you have something to offer, but you don't fit into that community because your values also don't align. So part of that is that outside walking around, helping, doing whatever. Last year, I had the very last spot for the very last time of the day. So, I mean, by then people were, you know. They're like, get yeah. shut up. But of course, I didn't, I didn't go back and say, hey, Rick, you need to move me to a more important time slot, right? 
no, because after I got to know Rick, if I had asked that, it had been the last time I ever come back to prepper camp. But now this year I got bumped up another hour, but I had a huge, you know, so I found my place is what I'm saying. But that in-between time was awkward, a little uncomfortable, a little off-putting, but eventually it starts getting a little more comfortable. And now, of course, I leave and I'm like, yeah, hell yeah, I'm going back. Yeah, and that's that's a really important thing. You, you need to ask, am I uncomfortable because I'm outside of my comfort zone right now? And that's just a time that you spend in any new community is outside of your comfort zone. Or is it that our values don't align? Mm -hmm. And that that's the one I will, I don't see the misalignment of values very quickly sometimes. It takes me a minute because people say things that they don't mean. Mm -hmm. And that's what makes me most uncomfortable in communities is when people say something and their body says something else. But that could be that their mom died that morning or it could be that that they're lying to me. And it takes me a minute to figure out which one. John Willis, like he'll size up a person in like 30 seconds in that way. I'm like, man, you read people well. <laughs> I go back and forth. I can't. Becky, of course, is. Yeah, she can read. Yeah, she can read like nobody's business. Some people I can tell right away. I'm like, oh, you're not who you say you are. And that might be for the better or might be for the worse. It might be that you're just hiding the real you a little bit because you're uncomfortable. So I'll, I'll pick and pro honestly, what I do is just listen. I'm really, yeah. Anyway, you know, I, I ask a question, I let you talk. And then if you stop talking, I ask you another question, you just keep talking. And eventually you're going to tell me who you are and not in a bad way, but in a way that um, is one of those, you know, we get, we get to the brass tacks pretty quick. I know that's a cliche, but it's true. You know, just yeah. let people talk and you, you'll find out about them. But yeah, you'll you can reel them eventually. What about if they say something outrageous? Like I am, I'm so worried about radiation poisoning from a nuclear explosion, which I'm not because I'll be dead if that happens. But you know, I, I try to redirect just a little bit, and yeah. I don't mean that in a bad way. But I met okay. I'm just gonna. Say, I mean, I I don't know names, and I met hundreds of people. I met an incredible lady yesterday, who came in from one of the fear porn gateway drugs. I call it right. Yeah. And won't say who or where, whatever, doesn't matter, but they did. And they had fear on their face or anxiety at least. And also that anxiety was causing issues with their significant other because they were scared and the significant other said, I don't agree with this, why you're scared, why you're scared or what you're doing. I don't even agree with being prepared. And so I tried to bring it around to. And I tell a lot of people this, that if you're really, really scared, if, if you come in almost, not everybody, but most people come into prepping through fear, you're not going to stay there. Fear is a really good short-term motivator, but love and protection and purpose is a great long-term motivator. And prepping or homesteading will give you a purpose, but it needs to be more than that. It needs to be, this makes my life better now. And hey, if something bad happens, I'll be good too. And I, I told her, I said, just do that. And I know early on for me, it was like Y2K. You remember that? Yeah. The kids are like, what you mean? Like, yeah, we're, we're the same age. Yeah. So an aesthetic. Can, I might know? be older than you. A little, little but yeah. enough that we both remember, you know, when I say Y2K now, the kids on Insta or on TikTok are like, yeah, that's an aesthetic. And I'm like, what's it, you know, <laughs> like a clothes style. So anyway, but yeah, you come into it, but don't land there and don't stay there. And so I, I try to, I try to accept what somebody says that might be in my mind. I'm like, oh boy. And then, I realize I don't need to judge because I have crazy beliefs too, have things that I used to believe that I don't believe anymore. And remember, Tim, <laughs> the non-aggression principle for the, you know, but the, the, in other words, get to the core, the things that really matter and the rest can just slide around. Now, if that person's entire personality and their reason for being is tied into one thing that isn't my shtick, then I may, we may not become a deep community. We might just be somebody who can interact and chat about it. But yeah, I try to I try to accept it because whatever somebody believes is important to them at that moment. But I also try to redirect and say, you know, there's a better long term goal. You can still do what you're doing. It can still solve this anxious problem. But what if it made you feel better and made your life better and helped you out, too? I think it's really important. The reason I brought radiation up is I'm oh. going to guess half the people listening to this are are afraid of that and have taken steps to counteract radiation Good poisoning. Point. And I, so I wanted to bring one that people who are listening to us right now are like, no, wait, that, that is a thing, Nicole, mm -hmm. right? Good point. Um, it's a thing for you and I support that and I'm willing to connect you with information on that. It's not a thing for me personally and that's okay too. And it's a surface thing, right? It's a symptom 
of the bigger issue, which is that there could be violence or war that causes a really terrible outcome. Bad things and in general. That we agree on. That we're both, it's like, yeah, that sucks. And how do we live a prosperous life knowing that that's happening in the background? Well, I know that it's been happening in the background for hundreds of years, thousands of years probably, but I know you know more detail about the past few hundred years. Uh, so that's, and that's, that goes back to the question we were talking about. I was like, mm -hmm. well, let's talk about religion. When you meet somebody who's Jewish and you're Christian, or you're like, I can't talk to you because you're Jewish. Right. Because we don't agree on that. What does it matter? To some, you know, uh, so there yeah. are people who that would be a thing, but Absolutely. I, what I witness more often in our culture is that you know, Christians are talking to Jewish people, are talking to not Muslim people, are talking to atheists, and it all seems to be okay. And sometimes they're sharing ideas, and sometimes one person of one faith moves to another faith. Sure, and that's healthy. That's that's how you grow and learn. And I love what you just said a second ago is this is what they're thinking about in this moment. Mm. And that's what it is. And you, because I, I, I heard this just the other day is that um, you guaranteed you don't believe what you believed 20 years ago. And you might think you do because you live with yourself every day. It's like, <laughs> you know, you look in the mirror every morning, you're like, oh, there's same old Tim. And then I go home and there's a picture of me going to the balancing rock trail when I was 18 years old. And I'm like, Oh, that's not the same old Tim, <laughs> right? So that's what happens. You get that, you get to that point where things start to change. And even things that you think are a hill to die on might not be a hill for you to die on in 10 years. I heard it said the other day, they said, if you're not a liberal at 20, you have no heart. And if you're not a conservative at 40, you have no head. Yeah. And I was like, that's really cute. That's not true, but it was a really neat way of saying that over the gen, over a generation or over part of a lifetime, things that are important to you now might not be important later. So don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. And just because somebody disagrees or thinks into something that's, oh, that's kind of hokey, whatever, they might have, or they probably, no, let me back up. They do have a lot to offer and embrace it. And then if you find out, no, we're, we're not compatible, that's cool too. You know, no, no harm, no foul. People think I'm crazy for learning to handle my gun better sure. in self-defense and taking these classes in case I have to defend myself. And I, I think about this last week, one of my Hey Baby series was, Hey Baby, want to take your shot? And then I had a picture of me at fighting, like a video of me at fighting pistol sure. doing one of the exercises. And I got more comments on that one than on many, because it's like shooting a gun is, you know, some, some gun people really like gun shooting stuff. Oh. And there was an element of you're doing it wrong. That would never work. They would be able to grab the gun away from you and all of these things. Like it's, it's not perfect. So you shouldn't do that. I do. And, and then there's people who's like, you don't even need a gun. Those things are evil. And you know, <laughs> I used to be anti-gun guys Ask back when I was your, younger. Yeah. The same thing. Sorry. I cut you off. <laughs> yeah. But it's true. It's just funny because if people only assessed me based on that, we'd never, We'd never move forward. Never be friends. Yeah. Hey, Grumpy Acres wants to know: Did you get a taste of our freeze-dried food from the Sun Oven? Oh, were you there, Grumpy Acres? Oh, I did not. Oh, no, I did not. I got I got a taste of a sausage or something out of a little compact one. I saw the biggest Sun Oven I've ever seen. It. I don't know. Fold it down if it would fit on a pallet. I think it would, but that would be it. This thing, I don't know. I you know it would it would feed thousands of starving children somewhere it was massive I, it almost looked like something dr evil would have used in austin powers but it was incredible so i did not and i yeah anyway i may even have met grumpy acres and don't remember and if i did i need to apologize now well you've because, met him at self-reliance yes Festival. yeah i knew yeah. i had but yeah i should really suck at you know how it is the name to face connection yeah, yeah. i'm yeah. like oh i know this face oh i know that name mm -hmm. Whoop, they go right by the trip had their food okay yeah. Nice. It was a cool, really cool setup. Yeah, I'm wearing a High Point shirt today from Special Operations Equipment. I saw John the other day, and I had my checked button-down collared shirt that yep. I wear sometimes. I have four of those guys because I found a shirt I liked, so I bought the last four. <laughs> and the reason I'm out and about, mm -hmm. besides I like it, is I, yeah. it's the way it is. And I print less than I used to print, but I print. The, the gray man concept of just kind of staying below the radar is there's something to be said about that you know 
I don't wear <laughs> at Prepper Camp. I didn't wear the SOE shirt that has the great big logo, but I did wear shirts that had the really tiny logo, you know, because there's a word in there. Hey, L2 survive. Great to see you. There's a word in there that some people don't like. Doesn't bother me a bit, you know, but I get it. Yep. Anyway, apparently it buffered for some people. That could oh. be my internet. I do have fiber here now, but if you can believe that. Fiber is good for you. Though. Yeah, but occasionally oh. it does. I was like, I was kind of like, am I on the wrong Wi-Fi network? Because we have a mesh network here outside. Ooh, okay. And then my inside network is different. But nope, I'm on the right network. So every so often my computer is like, I want to go outside for a minute. Connect. <laughs> John does that sometimes too, doesn't it? Yeah. yeah. It's that problem. Well, yeah, and he, I think he has maybe DSL and he has two different providers that okay. he can be on and Starlink. And usually Starlink in the garage is better than, than his other network. I've been looking into Starlink. That's another thing for another day, but I, I need to have that for the road, I believe. I, yeah, I used, my next door neighbor has one. And when I was working on my duplex in Nashville, mm -hmm. when I told you I stayed there for yeah. a week, I brought his Starlink and I actually did a show over Starlink from my duplex, Ow. but Huh? Good. It was good. The problem was I had to put the antenna where it would link, okay. which was outside the duplex, which was not, it's not in maybe the, the most theft protective Fair. place. And, and so the only place I could get it was like right in front of the duplex by the road. Oh, okay. And yeah. so it would go out during the day and it would come in at that time. How I was like, this, this would be fine on the roof here too. Like I could put it on the roof, but the connection was pretty good. My fiber is better. Okay. That's what I was wondering because. But it's totally yeah. reasonable. I know Evan has a whole rig. He did. I found out about it after the fact. I was, I should, I'll check it out at SRF if yeah. he has it. Yeah. But yeah. I'd will. Love to, I, yeah. I, I'm a tech geek. I like that kind of stuff, but it, yeah, I, I, it would be good. Hi, Janet. I see Janet and I haven't seen her in a while. Okay. What other ways can you think of that building community has parallel with what you do to build a successful business? Not like the actions that you take, like things I'm thinking of are in order to build community, you need to have ways to communicate Fair. and do that consistently. Well, OK. I mean, we, you know, Facebook, some people think Facebook's evil, of course, but I never I, I realized when I sold my business just recently, I never built a website for my business. It was 100 percent on Facebook. Some people are gonna be like, oh, that's bad. Well, it was a local business for starters. Right. And in a an emergency, because I talk about power outages an awful lot. The best way to get actual information is through Facebook or for people who have it next door. And so having a, I used to laugh when I was, when I was like 18 or 20, when I worked at home hardware, they would have these systems or processes in place that seem so stupid. And I'm like, why do you have that? And they're like, because if we didn't have a process, everybody would do it differently and nothing would ever get done. So if you have Paul Wheaton, if you have, hey Paul, sorry, I gotta stop that. Anyway, so um, yeah, if you if you have a process in place at the time, a way to say send mass text messages to all my customers that hey we're having a flash sale, fifty dollars any lawn will mow. You can easily port that over to a community thing with a Zello channel, with a, a text app, with Telegram, like the workshop uh, Telegram group, which I love, all of that. But if you waited and didn't have that in person or a built before you needed it, nobody's going to know where to go. One person's going to come to your house and ask for information. Another person's going to send you a letter in the mail that's never going to make it there. And a third's just going to lose their mind and run away. So you need to have those. And, you know, as an anarchist, the word process kind of ruffles my feathers, even though I don't have them. But it, you need to have those have ways of communication to get important things out there. Yeah. And, and Paul says, have patience, which I think is an answer to my question. You need to have patience in your community for things taking longer than you think they need to take, but yeah. it just people work at their own pace. People have different priorities than you do. And that works in business too. Like, why isn't this person answering my email or why isn't this person committing to this proposal or what? Because they, because you care about the timeline of that proposal, but they care a lot less or any of those things. Patience is helpful. And you have to accept it. I, did you ever read any John Maxwell books, like 21 Irrefutable Laws of Leadership or anything like that? So he had a rule. I can't remember the exact percentage, but I think it was when you find somebody that can do something 80% as well as you, as good as you, let them do it. But what's not said underneath of that is you have to accept that the job isn't going to be quite as good or it's probably going to take longer. And you have to 
I want to talk about that comment mm -hmm. there. Um, but when it comes down to it, you have to accept those things. Bye, and, Paul. Yep, bye, Paul. <laughs> and, and and deal with it. But yeah, um, where we, can we talk about that comment? Okay, so then Jules said that doesn't help those who are perma banned from Facebook or Twitter. That's like saying what if, what if, what if. I wasn't. I was just using Facebook as an example, not as. I mean, you you can pick whatever platform you want. You can pick whatever process you want. And if you're concerned that your community wouldn't be able to have communications or anything through that, then focus on an area that the majority are going to have. I think of. I grew up in an 80s evangelical home. You know what we used to have next to the the phone was a prayer chain. So if something bad happened or somebody needed prayers. There was one person called the first six people, and then it was like a pyramid scheme, but it wasn't, you know, so it would just work its way down. That was the process that Digby Wesleyan Church had in place to get communications out. So it doesn't have to be what, don't get stuck on the specific that I mentioned or my example, take the principle and then turn it into something. Yeah. And as far as finding information in an emergency, Facebook being the best place to do it. It right. is in my community the best place to find information in a situation where tornadoes hit, power's out, ice storms are coming through, somebody's got cancer and we need to help them. And if you are one of those people who've been permanently banned from Facebook, hopefully your spouse has not or somebody else near you has not, because then your best way to do it is to have a relationship, which is community, with a person who can get that information for you. And then if you know that, feed it into that system. So if I know that the best power outage information comes from Facebook, mm -hmm. but I've got five people who can only work on Telegram, Signal, whatever else, then my job has just become in that community, if that matters in a in a crisis situation, I, I take it from there and put it there. And right. then the people who are permanently banned, because we have those in our network. I have, 100%. like we got people off Twitter forever because they were <laughs> in DC on January 6th, oh, not wow. doing anything remotely to do with protesting. But geographically, they were there and Twitter was like, you're out. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So so I think that was maybe part of that motivation. And if you've been struck enough on Facebook, mm -hmm. not only can you not get on, but all the fake accounts you try to get on with can't. I, I know somebody who had six fake count attempts before her seventh fake count, account attempt worked and now She's back on Facebook, but she lost all of her network there. Sure. So but there are ways. Like if they'll they'll just be like anything coming from this IP address is out. That makes sense. Yeah. And I mean, there's workarounds for all of it, but like you said, the simplest one. And I was thinking that way you're talking. That's why I give you a shoulder punch because 100. percent That's right where I was going. Was okay. You can't, but you just need you have one step removed at that point where you have a way to get the information yeah. to people. You know, I mean, how did they do it years ago? You know, the old Pony Express where they'd hop on one pony to the next to the next and ride them till they were three quarters dead and then hop on the next one and keep going. And you just have to have a system in place and figure it out and make sure up ahead, uh, you know, make sure you look ahead to for that kind of communication. I mean, you look at the the Tennessee homesteaders group that they just created on Facebook. I mean, the reason it was there, much as we love it or hate it, is because that's where most people are. But you could easily get banned. It's true. Yep. Does he say? Oh, wow. Oh, he says, oh, sorry. when is the prepping self-reliance community going to get together and have their own social network? They already do. There's lots of them. That's the thing. We keep asking questions like that. And we already do. Like people keep asking me, when are we going to build the counter economy? We're in the middle of building it. It's it's there already. You may not be able to do 100% of your business in our freedom oriented community through alternative means, but you could do a lot. Yep. And I'll tell you somebody who has put a lot of that together is Derek bros. Yes. Yep. Because he just made a decision. That's it. I'm not, I am not participating in the monetary system. I'm just going to go and do my thing. And he has done his thing and other ways. Community like that. Really. That's what puts it together because, okay. Prepper broadcast network has their own social network. Prepper net with Forrest Garvin have their own social network. Uh, Tag life done free. They free have setting. their own social network. How, so you've got almost like the early adoption of the internet when you had all of these networks that weren't connected. We have to make sure we connect those networks somehow. And that's cool. I'm, you know, and I'm good with wherever you want to be. It doesn't bother my time any, but we just have to make sure that we get, and that, that's actually been one of my passions over the last few years. I get a little slack the last few months, but was reaching out to all of these, what I call disparate 
prepping groups or homesteading groups that haven't ever had a taste of the greater TSP ecosystem. And I'm like, hey, come on in and let's talk, you know, and, and that's the way to make those connections. And also, if you've got this community here, that community there, you guys may not align completely, but you can end up being side by side and work together when it's needed. If that Does that make sense? And of course, you've got, yeah, what, I mean, I'm on MeWe, I'm on Snort, I'm on, oh, we used to remember Float, <laughs> Float Sunk. Yeah, it sucks. <laughs> but beyond that, and, and every day, I think there's never a day goes by that somebody doesn't tell me, I have a plan for another new alternative social media platform, which is great. I like it. But when it comes down to it, it may or may not be the answer. I don't know. I'm not sure. I have yet to find all the traction that I want or need on one of those alternative platforms. So here I am on snort.social, which is the Noster network, which is a decentralized social network. This <laughs> snort.social webpage is a way that I can view the information on Noster. Oh, look, it's Jack from the Survival Podcast. And this cannot be banned because it is decentralized. You can choose not to see things that you don't want to see <laughs> on it, but it can't be banned. And you do not have to look through it at it through snort.social. You can download a different app on your phone and look at it a different way, but the, the information is just there. It is in its infancy and because the person just said but a big one like Facebook. The answer is we can't until people use them. Oh, look, Jack's going to be at, he's going to be at the Self-Reliance Festival with Joel and Nicole Sauce. Anyway, so there are multiple ones. Freesteading.com is one. I'm going to stop the share. <laughs> There are people here today in YouTube talking to us who are on freesteading. I saw Grumpy Acres here. They're there. Yes. And MeWe is one that is not decentralized, that kind of works. It goes through phases. Every one of these, if they have systems in place where you can't be banned, that is, that's a thing. And that's right. awesome. And Noster, that Noster protocol is something I'm very excited about and I hope it continues to grow. And if it does, we are early adopters. That's going to be awesome. But it could just as possibly in five years be completely obsolete. And I've invested time posting to the social network and getting to know how to use it. And that would, that would be sad. But if I don't try all of these alternatives mm -hmm. that I come across that have people who I want to talk with, then when there's one or two that become more Absolutely. more populated i'm i'm out i'm out to lunch and i'm just starting on that now and there's no loss so when i rem i mean i went full in on float and for those of you who don't remember you don't need to remember it's fine it was just another alternative platform that i love and you know what one day it shut down we lost all that we had there but you know what's cool for instance, Dave and Mary from Liberty Late Night. They're awesome. I'd never met them before. They found me because I would post pictures of my dogs, my supper, and my generators on float. Because he was like, hey, a lot of people on here posting a lot of conspiracy stuff. I like your stuff. Do you want to come on the show? And now I've been on two or three times. We're friends. We talk. I think Bonnie Blue. Do you know Bonnie Blue? Yeah. I think I met her through. Bonnie Blue's awesome. Yeah, she is. She's always commenting on my YouTube videos, which makes my day. Pretty sure I met her on float as well. So guess what? And how many other people found the community through one exposure on float, one on me, wherever it happened to be, it's gone. Don't look at that as lost time. Look at that as invested time that you're just moving on to the next platform. Yeah. And I, I was on float too, and I had mm -hmm. some good connections there and it, it imploded and that's fine. I've got, I've got relationships so my relationship with Backwoods Butcher, who is coming to Self-Reliance <laughs> Festival and doing a whole butcher demo, exists because of Float. And I don't even know if he was on Float ever. No, he wouldn't have been. But Renegade Butcher was. Yep. And Lots Project Brian was. And all of those people were, which are who connected me with that. And if Float had never been a thing in my life, I would not have somebody showing you how to cut up a pig at Self-Reliance Festival. Right. Okay. I, I think I only sent you a couple of texts at Prepper Camp. Same type of thing. Whenever I meet somebody that I think would be a great fit for Self-Reliance or for your show, 
What do I do? I'll thumb it out. And I'm like, hey, Nicole, you got to meet this person because that's what we do. And if you, you know, if you left an event, same thing, you wouldn't look at that as a lost event because, oh, I spent three days there and now I've left and I don't have that time back. No, you look at that as an investment in the future. And that's the same with these platforms. One of them might take off, but if it doesn't, you're learning all kinds of skills. You're learning how to, you know, disseminate information, how to connect with other people and, um, you know, how to promote your stuff. So yeah, don't ever look at it as a loss. Look at it as one of those things. that's an investment to, to build your community. When you were a kid, did you pull apart electronics that were broken, try to fix them and put them back together? Yeah, because my grandfather used to do it too. <laughs> yeah, it's a Gen X thing too. It sure is. Uh, so I think part of this perspective is something that is particular to Gen X mm -hmm. that we are we will try all the new things because there were always weird new things coming out when we were like massively yeah. new things coming out. And we are going through another cycle right now of massively new things coming out we did this growing up and what we learned to do was just try it. And sometimes we tried it, threw up our hands, said a couple of bad words and walked out and never touched it again. Yeah. Sometimes we broke the crap out of things. Yes, digital passive, we'll talk about that in a second. We broke the crap out of things and could not fix them. And we lost out and we spent money. Hey, life done free. And other times we actually figured out how to do things better than the people who built them knew how to do things with the thing. And they're like, what is this superpower that the young people have? We just had time. Yeah. We just had time. Point. We had more time than we did. We just, oh, no, that didn't work. Okay, that didn't work. Okay, I'm going to like put my finger in my ear and like do all the something nobody ever thought of. That, that did something nobody ever knew it could do. My kids want to know how I can catch marshmallows in my mouth, cut a deck of cards with one hand <laughs> and juggle. And I'm like, because I had time to do that stuff when I was a kid, all that stuff. So <laughs> I hope that made your day. But yeah, they, yeah, they'll throw them at me from 10 feet away. Like, how'd you do? Because Danny and I, my best friend, used to practice in his basement for hours on end for no reason other than we could. Yeah, exactly. So Jen Vent Venture says, digital passes like remote access. Yes. So today we launched, well, we've had them for sale for a while, but today we sort of launched a reminder at selfrelianceFestival.com on tickets, you can click on digital passes. It will actually take you to a different site to buy them because that's the site where the video um, ends up being mm -hmm. downloadable lately, later. But during the event, we are streaming live from one of the two stages and it will probably go back and forth between the two stages a little bit. But we, can, we have simultaneous sessions and we can only stream one thing at a time. And that, that is run with a really awesome digital MC that we have who's pretty good at it. And she brings questions up for you to ask and ask some of the speaker live. And you have the whole community of that. Letty is making a, a bingo card, mm. like SRF bingo card. So there'll be some of that community building going on in the comments there for the digital passes. And then afterwards, you get access to all the recordings that we make. So you'll see the sessions that we did not stream live. It takes us about a month to get through all the editing, mm -hmm. but they are 95 bucks right now over at selfrelianceFestival.com if you want to do that. Virtual bingo. That's right. Fun. It's going to be really fun. So just because that question was asked, I thought I would mention it because we mentioned today, like you say, we say things and we think every, we've talked about that earlier Always. in the show, right? Mm -hmm. We say things and then people like just didn't hear that moment and we have to say it again. Oh yeah. And then you have to hear it seven times before you're like, okay, I'm willing to I'm willing to take that on now. And I'm the same way, guys. I have to hear things multiple times. You have a yes, podcast? you can stay in Idaho and catch some great info. Joel Joel Salatin is definitely on the list of people being streamed because I'm pretty sure that anybody who buys the digital passes would kill me <laughs> if I didn't stream him. And the only thing that will keep him from being streamed is if like the internet's not working. And then I will like beg him to please come on a live stream with just our digital pass holders, see if he's willing to do that after the fact. Like if I will have back plans to my backup plans, but so far we've been pretty good and stay like sometimes the internet glitches and that, that just happens. We do have the recordings are being recorded separately from the internet. So so we end up because we had some internet glitches with CJ Kilmer last year and his presentation was so good, but we got it. We got it recorded. So I got to meet that dude. I haven't met CJ yet in person. So yeah, it's pretty cool. I seen a comment up just a little bit. Alaska, hard to meet people when you're an introvert. Care to comment on that? Or Are you like an me? introvert, Tim? 10%, 20%. 
I'm ninety percent an introvert. Yeah, I and I know a lot of people. And that goes back to what we talked about first about what it takes to build a business and what it takes to build a community is being willing to go out of your comfort zone. For me, going out of my comfort zone is being around a lot of people. I also get really energized from it, but I don't like I have to sleep for days. <laughs> so for lunch, after that's this. Lot, like I got it, it takes a lot of energy. Um, I do find being at events like Self-Reliance Festival where it's our people. Yeah who when they say something, usually their body language is saying the same thing. I'm not, I'm not as stressed out trying to read the body language mm. and figure out what's true and not true. And so I end up less exhausted than if I'm at a corporate event where most people are lying most of the time. It stresses me out to talk to liars. That's a good point. Cause you're, you're, I guess you're always on edge. Or I'm always on edge. Analyzing. When I lie, you can tell I'm lying too. Cause I just don't hide it. Sure. Um, and that's just, that's my thing. And I'm so I'm I test very highly on the introvert scale, but then because I'm very perceptive and I'm a natural teacher, mm -hmm. you'll find a lot of people who perform yes are also introverts. 100%. And and it's it's a weird thing. Like my choir director at the choir I sing in, I realized one day he was an introvert when I saw him resetting his energy before we started and I saw him do this whole thing and I was like, "You're an introvert." Even today, coming here was the same thing. I'm like, oh, I don't want to bug Nicole. I know she's tired. I'm exhausted. I just want to go to Nashville and disappear for 36 hours because that's where I'm heading next, just to disappear. And I was like, no, I need this. I need to come and see. And it. And of course, as soon as I show up, yeah, it's great. But it's that, yeah, I don't know. I, I would say 20% is what I am. But it's just that little bit of getting over the hump, you know? Yeah. Well, and then understanding what introverted means. Mm -hmm. Introverted doesn't necessarily mean the quiet person in the crowd. Yeah, that's true. It Because I'm not. <laughs> you didn't know that. It means where you get your energy from. So like Sean Mills will own a room when he walks into it. Got lots of funny stories to tell. And he walks into a bar and leaves, you know, after sure. a night of hanging out with people way more energized than he went. And I walk out of that same bar having had a good time, like, I don't want to see anybody for another two days because I got, I got to go to my private quiet place and whatever. And people who know that about me do what Tim does did. I'm yeah. not going to call Nicole. I know she's tired. Nicole was actually at the very tip end of her rope when she got that text message from <laughs> Tim. She was like, I am so like done. I spoke at an event yesterday, blah, 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 blah. Like all, all the excuses. And I, I got his text. And I know Tim well enough that I know that I could have said, you know, today's just not good because yeah. I'm at the end of my rope. And then I thought, I really could use a friend today that I can just talk to about feeling burnt out <laughs> and what steps I might take to, to be better for the next week. And we sat and we talked for an hour and a half over coffee. And it, I feel better now because I talked to a real friend. And for an introvert, being around a real friend really helps. I would not have that had I ignored community and, and ignored you. <laughs> or hey, like the first time you didn't show up on my show, been like you can never come back, right? Because I was, yeah, because exactly. you know, see, there's that, yeah. yeah. And I went through the same process in my brain this morning too, because I was like, yeah. Any, anyway, I already, yeah, but it, that's what it is. It's yeah, but we just have, yeah. And when we, you got to give a little grace once in a while, you yeah. know, but not, yeah, you know how it is. But yeah, that's exactly it. Just stepping into your comfort zone, and also know when to recharge. That's important. I don't know if I knew that for many years that I needed to recharge after an event. And it doesn't mean that I don't love and do everything I can at those events. And I do, but I also know now that I think that's part of the reason why I love driving to these events is because when I leave self-reliance after, I don't know, at that point, it'd be like 30 some days on the road. I get three days of just decompression on the road. Now I may also have a passenger in the vehicle with me as well. And that's totally cool too but it's just road time, do you know? And mm -hmm. yeah, that's what I like. Well, that's what Porterhouse said. After his first self-reliance festival, he drove home to California from Camden, Tennessee <laughs> by himself in his car. And he said he had so much time to just think about what had happened at that event and process that he came home ready to go. Yeah. And he ended up growing his YouTube channel by tens of thousands of people, which was not as like that wasn't even on his radar as something he wanted to do, per mm -hmm. se. And he is empowering so many other people 
to take control of their lives, to make themselves better, to, to do hard things as a result of that. That's actually, that's my payback for SRF oh, is yeah. every one of those. I'm like, he is influencing so many pe more people than I've ever influenced yep. that after one event, it's amazing. And that, that, that process tree. time is good. Hmm? Sorry. The family tree, that, that family tree aspect of all these events, it's the legacy that comes out afterwards that absolutely makes it, 100% worth doing and yeah. and yeah and we'll never know we'll never know how many people I, I you know I, I've got a few packages in the mail from people who are like hey started the business because of what you said Tim yeah like and those I'm, dog treats yeah oh I know I love that and I'm like sometimes I don't think I talk about starting a business enough people are like somebody the other day is like hey I need um podcasts for businesses and it was I think it was on reddit so not connected to me at all and I seen my name in there I was like what <laughs> because yeah so it's it's cool and I that yeah, there's nothing better than that. I'm telling you right now. That is that is the reason to do it. You know, I also tell people you can make money and help people. They're not mutually exclusive. Yeah. Because if you try to do one without the other, you're going to crash and burn either way. So make it make it um, figure out what motivates you and um, monetize it. Yeah, monetize it 100 percent. And making money is what you you need to do to live. It's what spins the world around. Yeah. And when you know, I, I, I hear other creators at different events I've gone to and they're like, this is just a passion. I don't need to make money at it. And I'm like, and I will politely say, I will, way off on a tangent here, but <laughs> I'll politely say, you know what? That's not necessarily true. I said, you keep doing it if you want to, but you know, you get motivated and then you need determination and you might be motivated to do it for a while because it's your passion, but how do you keep going? And maybe you will, but if you can turn that into a business, the other thing about monetizing something is it allows you to scale it to help even more people. I had to buy a $1,200 foldable stage for Self-Reliance Festival this time. Okay. This is just one example. Had we not made any money on any of the events in the past, and it took me four to break even, by the way, <laughs> uh, I would not have had anything in the kitty to buy that stage. But because I did, we have two stages, two tents. Mm. And originally I was going to have the same person who made the wooden stage that we use in the circus tent make another one but then i thought like he's busy the foldable ones fold up smaller and then i'll it'll be less of a storage challenge in the future so i'll just do this mm. so that's the other thing about making money is when you make money doing things you love you have money to invest to make those things better which in the case of something like an event makes the event better for everyone draws more like suddenly in. you have a pa system that works <laughs> and i actually had to rent more PA equipment for this one because there's two stages and, you know, we've got two sound guys, one at each stage and that's all of that. So it's, it's something that I think when you live a homesteading lifestyle or a prepper lifestyle, you find ways to go ultra cheap on stuff. Sure. Right. And so you kind of get in this mindset of cheap, 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 cheap. You have a little pick a little bit. <laughs> Sorry. It's okay. I'm, like, I'm, I'm not singing, guys. Sorry. <laughs> so, and that's not bad. It's not bad to look at the expense side of the equation. Absolutely. But to judge people for the revenue side of the equation, I want the people in our network to do well. Oh, you're right. And I, I want to do well, too. I want them to do better than me. I tell people that all yeah. the time. Even in my hometown, when I was the only handyman in town, and people would come to me and be like, I'd like to start. I said, we need competition. I said, competition's great. I'd love to see you do great. You know, and turned out a guy who was doing something similar to me ended up buying my business. I, why? I If I'm making enough money doing what I'm doing and I love what I do, why wouldn't I want someone else to do the same thing and make money at it? Yeah. That's why I have a pretty good network of coffee roasters. Yeah, it <laughs> We're is. All in I'm like, buy one from all of us, whatever. Yeah. We did a Christmas package last year with Food Forest Farm mm. where it was like a pound of each yeah. in the Christmas That's package. Great. And so I sent you know, 20 pounds to him and he sent 20 to me. And that was, I like have another eight. friend that yeah. might want to be in on that. Yeah. We year, should totally, so. we should do the prepper, prepper coffee. Disaster package. coffee from James from PBN. Yeah. He, oh, his coffee. I drank that all weekend too. So that'd yeah. be fun. Anyway. Yeah. That's, Again, another And connection. that's where these ideas come from. That's so literally what, why we're doing community today. Well, you know, I, so back to the repetitive thing. So we're coming full circle to that and it's about time to close and we'll talk about our stuff sure. and wrap up. I did a presentation on underground networking at Jack Spearco's three events ago. Okay. And that was the, you loved it. 
You oh, like wrote me an email about it. I forgot I'd even wrote that. In the right. last, so what happens in our community is there's a zeitgeist. There's a mindset that happens and we're all kind of thinking about some of the same things, right? Mm -hmm. And you asked me like, why are you thinking? It's interesting that you're thinking about some of the things you're thinking about, like the the SHTF fear thing needs, we need to put to help bring people to more of a place of passion and love to build a better life yes. rather than reaction to the things going on in the world. And we're, we're all thinking about it right now, yeah. right? I have had in the last four months, 12 people, about 12 people tell me, I saw your presentation on underground networking somewhere because I gave I've given that presentation multiple places mm -hmm. and it's a little different every time. Sure. Like it's just, it's tailored to where it goes and it changed my life. And this is how it changed my life. And when Porter house said it to me, right. When I was on his show, I don't know if it was on his show or before his show. He's like, that's the thing that changed my mind. And I had given it at SRF and he saw it at SRF. I realized I need to give that at SRF again. Right. So that's how we're starting. Awesome. And it's it's not exactly the same, but I realize that people still have trouble or still struggling with connecting the dots from I know I need this connections. I know I need to figure out how to do these things, but I don't know how. And it's scary. Right. And when you realize that the, the network's already there, it becomes less scary. And then you start making decisions that build your life, build a counter economy, build a better system than what we have now. Absolutely. So. I'm excited about it. I'm excited too. I mean, I'm giving the same presentation, oh yeah, the same concept as I gave at LFTN, 100%. And one thing you told me, uh, I'll leave it at that, but um, I, I learned from you a couple of years ago is that you need to revisit these topics over and over and over again because you're not in the same place, the audience isn't in the same place, and there's lots of new people who have joined the community, all three of those reasons. Because it's like a river, you can't step in the same river twice, and you can't teach the same topic twice because... Every time you do it, you've changed just a little bit. Yeah, it's absolutely true. All right. Well, tell us how people can follow you, promo something, whatever you want to yeah, do before sure, we wrap whatever. up. Yeah, sure, uh, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> you know what's cool? When you type in Toolman Tim into YouTube now, I show up before the old Tim the Toolman Taylor. So that's basically what I tell you. But if you like old school talk radio and not like political end of things, but I say, I don't know, it's somewhere between a cross between uh, Jack Spearco, Art Bell, and Bob Vila and you're used to getting stuff done all the time, I want to be your soundtrack in your ears. So check out Workshop Radio. I rebranded it to sound like an old talk radio show. But yeah, search Toolman Tim in all the places, YouTube, TikTok, Instagram, whatever. Anyway, you'll find me there. And if you're so inclined, come by and join the Telegram group because that's where all the fun starts. We call each other delinquents. If you're part of the workshop community, we're delinquents, but that means we're just outside the system. We think different and we love to encourage and also bust you up a little bit if uh, we think we should. All right. And if you want to listen to what I've been thinking about for the week or what people have asked me about, I have a podcast called Living in Tennessee. It's on every podcaster there that I can think of. If I'm not on the one you use, let me know. I'm sure I'll get there. Or you can go to livingfreeintennessee.com to grab the audio files. If you want to support the work I'm doing here and you're one of my existing podcast listeners, grab your coffee at hollowroast.com. It's delicious. I might have yet another cup today. And you can also become a member at livingfreeintennessee.com. With that, guys, go out, make it a great week.